Welcome to Karen Normal. I hope you're having a good week. My name is Kara Thusen, and I combine my love of snacks and ghost attacks. So if you like snacks and you like ghosts, or if you just like snacks or you just like ghosts, you should go ahead and click that subscribe button if it's red. And while you're down there, go ahead and click the thumbs up button because that would be really cool. And you would be cool and people would think you're cool. And I would think you're cool. Okay, so I don't know if you can see because <laughs> camouflage. <laughs> But I'm wearing my wings today because today's story is a doozy and it takes place on an airplane. And this airplane has actually a very well documented history, which I'll get into later. It involves a hijacking and murder. So disclaimer out there, this is a real historic event. So there is some violence, so viewer discretion advised. So before I get into the history of today's story, um, I will be making energy balls. So I've been making a lot of pretty and healthy things on this channel and Yeah, I'm feeling it. So today I'm going a little bit lighter a little bit healthier and These energy balls are actually really good really simple and here are the ingredients you will need Okay, so how many of you out there like to fly? I don't mind it up into a point, and that point is at about four and a half hours. Because at four and a half hours, I am starting to notice every annoying thing that everyone's doing on the plane. You're talking too loud, you think you're being funny, so you talk louder so that other people can hear you. You are putting your feet up on the seats a little too close to someone you're sitting next to. You're getting up too much. You're getting into your bag that's in the apartment above, and you're grabbing one thing out, then you sit back down. You stand back up, you grab another thing. Why didn't you just get all that stuff in the beginning of the flight and be prepared? So you don't have to get up a million times. So at about four and a half hours, I'm starting to plot murder. And it's not as bad these days because I do have podcasts now and so I can kind of tune you guys out. And I'm sure I do annoying things as well. But um, yeah, today's story actually took place on October 13th, 1977. And this was a hijacking of the Lufthansa flight 181 and you can look this up it's very well documented um but this hijacking took place from the 13th of october to the 18th of october so can you imagine being on a plane for about six days not to mention the terror of being hijacked but just being on the plane in a small space for that long a time i would go insane and here's what happened. So October 13th, 1977, four terrorists board a flight to Frankfurt, Germany. And this was again, Lufthansa flight 181. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but they board the flight to Germany. Within a half hour, they decide to hijack the plane. I'm sure they decided this long before, but yeah, you get the gist. So they hijack the plane and they're in talks with Germany and they're like, hey, we need you to release our homies from your jails. And these homies were from the RAF, and that stood for Red Army Faction. And these were horrible terrorists as well. And then they were like, oh, and also, can you like give us $15 million for our troubles? And so Germany was like, yeah, no, that, that doesn't work for us, sorry. So this upset them, obviously, and they continue with the flight and they actually don't want to go to Germany. So they're circling around and they're running out of fuel. So they decide that they have to land and refuel. All these airports are saying, yeah, you can't land here. No, you're not, you're not going to land here. So they would block their runways with fire trucks and cars. And the hijackers were like, well, we're going to land anyway. So they land and they refuel. And while they're landing and refueling, Germany's like, okay, we need you to release the hostages. And this, really upset the hijackers because they're not getting what they want so why would I give you what you want so they take off they fly around again aimlessly and have to land again to refuel they do this multiple times one of the times the pilot gets back on the plane and when the pilot gets back on the plane one of the terrorists shoots the pilot killing him in front of everyone so of course the trauma is setting in with everyone. 
and they're wondering, are we even gonna make it? Are we gonna be alive after this? So again, they're flying around aimlessly and all the airports are saying, yeah, you can't land here. Finally, they reach an agreement with Somalia and they land in Somalia. And Germany says, okay, we will release the prisoners, but you need to give us some more time. The hijackers agree to this. And so while they're on land, on the tarmac, they kick the pilot out, the one that they killed, and he's laying on the tarmac, just so they know that they mean business. So Germany is smart, and they fly in, and they have their lights off so no one can see, and they land. Long story short, Germany quietly boards the plane, and they shoot and kill three of the terrorists. One survived and, of course, went to jail. And all of the passengers survived, with some of them with just minor injuries. So this was obviously considered a success for Germany, although the pilot did die. 80, I think it was 86 to 89, I can't remember, of the passengers and crew members survived. So this, it could have been a lot worse. So this was definitely a success for Germany, and they decided that they weren't going to negotiate with terrorists anymore from that point on. So, crazy, right? This airline, this airplane rather, was bought by Continental Airlines. And the next story is told by the flight attendant who was on board that plane. But first, here's how you make energy balls. Okay, again, what you'll need is a cup of rolled oats, half cup of semi-sweet or dark chocolate chips, preferably mini, half cup of ground flax seed, half cup of any nut butter, crunchy, creamy, whatever, third cup of honey, and a teaspoon of vanilla. And at this point, you can put whatever you want in it. If you want to add raisins, dried cranberries, white chocolate chips, just follow your heart. Stir this all together and it should look something like this. Then roll into separate balls about this size. Mix about two dozen, place on a cookie sheet, and freeze for one hour. And then you can enjoy them. All right, the story was submitted by Audrey. And this was the 80s. Okay, so David Bowie, Michael Jackson, Jenna Jackson, Paul Abdul, they were all their age. Audrey was this cute, young uh, flight attendant for Continental Airlines. This day, she happened to board that very plane that we talked about earlier. This was her first time on the plane. She said when she got on the plane, she can feel this ominous presence, like a like something was watching her at all times. And she said that in the fuselage, you can see where the bullet holes were patched from that hijacking. The maintenance guys told her that if you shine the light down in the fuselage, that you can actually see bullets in there. She said she can't confirm that because she didn't see it herself, but that's what she heard. So, they board the plane. She gets everything ready. She's doing her, you know, exits and the mask and all that fun stuff. And the flight takes off. So, she's going through the plane and she sees a call light go off. She goes and she answers and she's like, what can I help you with? And they're like, um, yeah, I, I didn't push the call light. So she's thinking, okay, maybe they just made a mistake and they're embarrassed and won't admit it. So she turns it off. Again, another place, call light goes off. She goes and she checks and they said, yeah, I, I didn't push the call light. So she's like, that's weird. And other flight attendants are also experiencing the same thing. One of the flight attendants goes to use the restroom. She comes out terrified, pale as a ghost. Audrey asked her what happened and she said that she saw a face in the mirror. And she said the face looked a lot like the pilot who was killed in that hijacking. So Audrey's thinking, okay, maybe it's, it could be all in our heads. They're trying to make sense of it because they knew what happened on that flight. So you know, things could be very well be in their head. So she goes into the galley and she says that all of a sudden water is spewing underneath the coffee pots. And she says it's like a water park. It's insane. 
and it's going everywhere. She's trying to stop it. And she says that she's soaking wet and the floor is soaking wet. And so she goes to the captain who, fun fact, is the only person who can turn on and off the water. She goes to the captain and she says, there's water everywhere. Can you turn it off? And he says, Audrey, I, I never turned the water on. And she's like, but it's flooding. It's everywhere. So he gets up and they go and they check. And she said, water is gone. Her jacket, completely dry. And at this point, she thinks she's going crazy. She's like, okay, these call lights are going off. The other flight attendant is seeing somebody in the mirror. There's water everywhere. And then it's, it's gone. It reminded me of the scene from The Shining when all the blood is flowing from the elevator. That's exactly what it reminded me of when she told me that. Anyway, she continues the flight and the phone rings. So, you know, they have the phone where they make announcements and they can actually call back to each other and they can call to the pilot. The phone rings, Audrey picks up and she hears a cry of saying, help me, help me. She hangs up and she's terrified. She's like, okay, all this stuff is happening. This is crazy. This, this can't be real. The pilot gets a call and it's just screaming on the other end. And he's telling Audrey, look, a lot of weird stuff does happen on this flight. So we need to get used to it. But just so you know, a lot of weird stuff is going to happen. So another flight attendant answers a call again, screaming. And Audrey says this just goes on and on throughout the flight. And she has to each flight because she has to go four different places that day, land and fly four different places that she has to act calm and like everything's okay. And she says she's had to hold in going to the restroom because she's not about to go in the restroom on the plane. So every time they land, she has to run into the airport, go to the restroom and come back. And she said that it was just exhausting and terrifying and, and then having to put on a front of everything being okay. After the flight, she said, there's probably some flight logs from this flight where you can read what happened. She was discussing with the other flight attendants and the captain of everything that went on. And some people were pretty calm talking about it and others were completely terrified. So do you think that it could have been the captain? Could it have been the terrorist from that hijacked flight? Or could it have just been maybe a elaborate prank? Maybe something wrong with the electrical with the call lights going off. Maybe someone pranking them by calling them. But the water, I can't explain that knowing that the captain's the only one that can turn it on and off. And then it just being disappeared, it dissipated. I, I, I don't know what to make of that. I don't know. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, this had Audrey pretty shaken up and luckily this was her last flight on that airline or that airplane rather. So yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts. Audrey and the other flight attendants called this flight the ghost ship 201 because it was flight 201. And uh, that's what they refer to it as. So it's interesting because usually when it's just one person experiencing something, you can think, okay, maybe they're just crazy. It's all in their head. But when it's multiple people on the same flight, experiencing the same and also different things going on, paranormal things, it makes you wonder, could it be paranormal? Could it have been a ghost? Could it have just been a prank? I would love to hear your thoughts. And with that said, I would love to hear your stories as well. And I have all my connections in the description box below. So please submit to me. I would love to hear it. Um, even if you think it's just a short little crappy story, I would still love to hear it. Um, yeah, here is the final outcome of the energy balls. All right, here are my balls. <laughs> Let's try it out. Oh yeah. I'm feeling lighter already. All right, try out this recipe. 
If you do, again, tag me in the socials. All my contacts are going to be in the description box. If you have any stories of your own, please submit them to me. And uh, if you've stayed this long, please comment a airplane emoji and a ghost emoji so I know who you are because you are the best. All right, I will see you guys next week. Okay, bye.